الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد نعم so we continue بإذ الله تعالى uh, with going through this fiqh of fasting series in which we read through the ahadith collected by Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala in his famous work Bulugh al-Maram and we had reached the third hadith the third hadith being the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma in relation to the entering of Ramadan or when the fast of Ramadan begins so he said rahimahullah ta'ala wa'an ibn Umar radiyallahu anhuma annahu qal sami'tu rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul idha ra'aytumuhu fasumu wa idha ra'aytumuhu fa'afthiru fa'in ghumma alaykum فَاقْدُرُوا لَهُ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ وَلِمُسْلِمٍ فَإِنْ أُخْمِي عَلَيْكُمْ فَاقْدُرُوا لَهُ ثَلَاثِينَ وَلِلْبُخَارِ فَأَكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ ثَلَاثِينَ وَلَهُ فِي حَدِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةِ رضي الله عنه فَأَكْمِلُ عِدَّةَ شَعْبَانَ ثَلَاثِينَ That is the hadith of Ibn, Ibn Umar رضي الله عنهما who said that I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say that when you see it, when you see and sight the new crescent of the month, then begin fasting. And when you see it again, then cease fasting, refrain from fasting. And if it is overcast, if it is overcast and cannot be seen, then estimate its sighting. And Muslim Imam Muslim Rahim Allah Ta'ala narrated, if it is overcast, then presume that it, yani Sha'ban, had lasted for 30 days. And in another narration by Bukhari, then complete 30 days. And also Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, that he reported on the authority of Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, then complete the days of Sha'ban as 30 days. So in relation to this hadith, ya ikhwan, then there are numerous masa'il and fawa'it that Ibn Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala that he mentions in his explanation and bi lahi ta'ala that we will mention some of those benefits and some of those fiqh issues and we will do our best bi lahi ta'ala to summarize and to keep it concise so the first benefit uh, that we will mention that he brings rahimahullah ta'ala is that he says annahu la yajib as-sawm qabla ru'yati al-hilal wa la yajib as-sawm ma'a ash-shak li qawlihi idha ra'aytumu So the first benefit that he mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala is that it is not an obligation to fast before the sighting of the moon. It is not an obligation to fast before the sighting of the moon or the new crescent. And it is not an obligation to fast due to doubt. It is not an obligation to fast due to doubt. And this is due to his statement, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ 
that when you have seen it, yani when you sight and you witness the new crescent. And this benefit here, ya ikhwan, that it is a reoccurring benefit that we will come back to bi'idhi ta'ala throughout our reading through the explanation of uh, these ahadith. We will find that this is a reoccurring benefit and a principle in relation to fasting and beginning the fast of Ramadan. That the command to begin fasting the month of Ramadan, that it is connected to the sighting of the moon. So if the moon has not been sighted, then it is not an obligation to begin fasting. And the second benefit that he mentions, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and it is connected to the first, is that he said, It is a must, it is a must, that the sighting be firmly established. It is a must that the sighting be firmly established. بِقَوْلِهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ Due to his statement, وسلم, if you have seen it or when you see it, when you witness the new crescent. أَمَّا لَوْ شَكَكْنَا فِي ذَلِكْ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَجِبُ الصَّوْمِ بَلْ مَنْ صَامْ فَقَدْ عَصَى أَبَلْ قَاسِمْ صلى الله عليه وسلم. As for if we have doubts pertaining to it, يعني meaning we are uncertain of whether the uh, the sighting has been firmly established or not, then it is not an obligation for us to fast. But rather the one who begins his fast, then he is disobeyed Abul Qasim وسلم, as we mentioned in the previous hadith, the previous narration that we uh, that we took. طيب, then he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, wa yadullu ala anna al-murada bil ru'yati huna al-ru'yatu al-ayniyya المتيقنه قوله تعالى في البقره فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم and that which shows as an evidence that the intent behind the sighting here is the sighting of the eye يعني the sighting the affirmed established Sighting of the eye is the statement of Allah Ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْهُ And whoever witnesses the month, the beginning of the month from amongst you, then he shall fast it. Now we move on to the next benefit. That Ibn Uthaymin Rahimahullah Ta'ala brings and he says, Bahiru al Hadith Yashmilu ma ida ra'aynahu bil ain al mujarradah al biwasitah al biwasitatil alati kal munadhar o kal mandhar al mukabbar o al mukabbar. He says that the that which is apparent from the hadith is that it comprises of whether we have seen it and witnessed it with the naked eye or if we witness the the crescent with uh, the intervention of technological aids such as a telescope. So that, w- that which is apparent from the hadith is that it comprises of both sighting the moon with the naked eye and with the likes of a telescope. And then he brings an important mas'ala. He brings an important issue 
uh, that we hear often being uh, differed over. And that is pertaining to yani, the sighting of the, the moon of Ramadan in a particular country. And does that sighting now compel others to fast or not? إذا ثبت الهلال في بلد ما ورؤيا يقينا فهل يلزم الآخرين الصوم أو لا The if the moon had been sighted in a particular country and it was sighted with certainty then does that compel uh, others to begin fasting or not? And again, this is an issue that we find uh, differed over. So he brings, rahimahullah ta'ala, a number of opinions. The first one, first opinion that he mentions, is that if the sighting is established in an Islamic country, first opinion, is that if the sighting of the moon is established in an Islamic country, then it is established on behalf of all of the people. That's the first opinion. That if the moon was sighted in a Muslim country, then that means now that everyone else in the world that they are to begin fasting. There's an obligation upon all of the Muslims to begin their fast throughout all of the various lands and countries. Regardless of whether their sightings are aligned or if they differ, and regardless of whether those places or those countries are near or far. And this opinion is the well-known opinion from the madhab of Imam Ahmad rahimahullah. And it is the opinion of many of the people of knowledge. And he says rahimahullah ta'ala and it is the opinion that many of the current day uh, scholars are of. And they use as a proof the hadith. They use as a proof the hadith. And that is the hadith that is collected by Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah ta'ala. الصوم يوم يصوم الناس والفطر يوم يفطر الناس That fasting is the day in which the people fast and meaning the, the that fasting is the day in which the people begin to fast so it's collective they begin to fast collectively and fitr is the day in which the people break their fast. And likewise they say and they use as a proof that this is no doubt awla, that is more befitting. That is more befitting that the people perform this act of ibadah together. And likewise min ajli ijtima'i kalimat al-muslimin in order to unite and unify the Muslims. And that is not befitting that there is a group of people uh, in a particular place eating and drinking whilst there are another group of Muslims who are fasting. So this is the first opinion. 
The second opinion that he brings, rahimahullah ta'ala, أنه إن اتفقت مطالع القمر وجب الصوم على كل قوم اتفقت مطالعهم that if the sightings of the moon are in agreement, then it is an obligation to fast upon all of those whose sightings are in agreement. Again, that if the sightings of the moon are in agreement with each other. So, let's say for example, that there are many lands, many Muslim lands, and they all have sighted the moon. So their sightings are in agreement. They are aligned with each other. Then there's an obligation upon those countries whom their sightings are in agreement to begin their fast. So an kanat al-wilaya wahida aw laysat wahidatan. Regardless of whether <clears throat> they are one individual nation or they are not one uh, nation. And the proof that they bring for this opinion is the ayah that we mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمُ that whoever witnesses the entering of the month from amongst you, then let him fast it. And how, ya ikhwan, is this an evidence? And how is this an evidence for them? For them to say that those lands whose sightings in agreement, then it is an obligation upon those lands. As for the other lands who have not sighted the moon, then it is not an obligation upon them. The how is this ayah used as a proof for that opinion? And the answer is that it is from the mantuq. Hadhul mantuq. Afwan. Hadhul mantuq. Wal mafhum. أَنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَشْهَدْ فَلَا صِيَامَ, فلا صيام عَلَيْهِ That this is what is actually mentioned in the ayah. But the evidence of it is the understanding of the ayah. So as we know in fiqh, that we have the mantuq and we have the mafhum. And you have that which is said, that which is mentioned. And we have that which is understood. So that which is mentioned is that whoever has witnessed the month from amongst you, then let him begin fasting. So that which is understood from the ayah is that the one who has not witnessed the month, then it is not upon him to begin his fast. That is the understanding of the ayah. Then he brings a statement from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and a group of scholars. And we will be the ta'ala, we will read it and summarize, try to summarize parts of it. But he says rahimahullah, inna rasul alayhi salatu wa salam qal, idha ra'aytumuhu fasumu. والجماعة البعيدون عن مطلع الهلال ومطلع الهلال في هذا المكان لم يروه. That he says that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم that he said that if, if you see it or when you see it when you sight it then begin fasting. So if there is a group of people who are Yani far away from this sighting or from that particular place in which the sighting had occurred, 
and they had not seen it. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Wasallam said, if you have sighted it, if you have seen it. So these group of people that they have not seen it, they have not sighted it. So this statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ That if you have sighted it, or when you have sighted it, is similar to his statement Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا أَقْبَلَ اللَّيْلُ مِنْ هَا هُنَا وَأَدْبَرَ النَّهَارُ مِنْ هَا هُنَا وَغَرَبَتِ الشَّمْسِ فَقَدْ أَفْتَرَ الصَّائِمِ That is similar to his statement Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that if the night approaches from here, and the day retreats from here, and the sun sets, then the fasting person has broken his fast. The fasting person has now broken his fast. Yani why does he bring this, this hadith? So he says, Rahimahullah, فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ تَقُولُونَ إِذَا غَرَبَتِ الشَّمْسُ عِنْدَ قَوْمٍ جَازَ لِلْآخَرِينَ أَنْ يُفْتِرُوا وَلَوْ كَانَتِ الشَّمْسُ لَمْ تَغِبْ الْجَوَابُ لَا وَلَمْ يَقُلْ بِذَلِكَ أَحَدْ So he says that if you are saying that when the sun sets with a particular people that is now permissible for others to eat and to break their fast even if the sun has not set with them the answer is no and no one has said this إِذَنْ إِذَا رَأَيْنَاهُ فِي مَكَانٍ وَلَمْ يُرَى فِي مَكَانٍ آخر بعد تحري والبحث فإنه لا يلزم من لم يره Hence, if we have seen it in a particular place, but it is not seen in another place, after searching and after trying hard to sight it, then, uh, then it is not uh, a compulsion upon those who have not seen it, those who have not sighted it. Why? And then he explains his argument further. He says, why? Yani why did he mention this hadith that if the night approaches from here and the day retreats from here and the sun sets, then the fasting one has broken his fast. That he says that this hadith is tawqeet yawmi, is a daily timing, yani daily scheduling. Where is the hadith, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ And if you have witnessed it, if you have seen it, and you see, if you have sighted the new moon, that is tawqeet shahri. It is a monthly timing, or a monthly scheduling. وَلَا فَرْقَ بَيْنَهُمَا There's no difference between the two of them. فَالشَّهْرْ عِنْدَ مَنْ لَمْ يَرَوْهُ لَمْ يَدْخُلْ So the month with those who have not yet sighted it, it has not yet entered. And this is due to his statement, سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَقَوْلِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَى Whoever sights the new moon from amongst you, then let him fast it. Let him begin fasting it. And those who have not yet sighted the moon, then how can we يعني, compel them to begin fasting? That this is his argument. And Ibn Uthameen Rahimahullah Ta'ala says, وَهَذَا الْقَوْلْ كَمَا تَرَى قَوِيٌّ جِدًّا جِدًّا And this opinion, as you, as you have seen, that it is very, very strong. It's a very strong opinion. And he said it's an opinion in which the soul feels at ease with. And it is the chosen opinion of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah Ta'ala. يعني هذا يزيده فضلا يعني this is an, an added virtue that is the opinion of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى طيب the third opinion that he brings 
And we will mention this briefly تعالى, in order to conclude this issue that he says that the third opinion in this in this masala in this issue and the nurse tabarun lil imam that the people that they act in accordance to their imam that they act in accordance to their imam so they fast and they break their fast in accordance to the action of their imam yani the one who is in charge the wali al amr and they use as a proof again the hadith as sawmu yawma yusum yusum nas wal fitr yawma yuftir nas that fasting is the day in which the people fast or begin to fast and fitr is the day in which the people begin to break their fast so they say that everyone who yani is under allegiance in a particular land then it's an obligation for him to yani, follow uh, the one who is in authority. طيب يا إخوان, moving on to the next benefit بإذن الله تعالى and that is that he mentioned رحمه الله أنه لا يجوز الفطر مع الشك في رؤية هلال that is not permissible, it is not permissible to break the fast due to doubt, right? doubting the sighting of the moon. So just as, just as it is not permissible to begin fasting upon doubt, it is not permissible to end or to stop fasting, to cease fasting uh, upon doubt. And that again is taken from his statement, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُوهُ فَأَفْتِرُوا and when you witness it, when you see it, then break the fast. فَمَفْهُومُهُ إِذَا لَمْ تَرَوْهُ فَلَا فِطْرُ So the understanding of this is that if you do not see it, then you do not break the fast. Then he brings, Allah Ta'ala, under this benefit, he brings a scenario that can occur. So he mentions Rahimahullah Ta'ala and we'll quickly briefly go through this uh, scenario as it is of benefit be Allah. That he mentions that if a person was in a place, for example, that he had no way of knowing uh, the entering and the exiting of Ramadan. He didn't know, we had no way of, det- of, uh, of determining when Ramadan had entered and when it had ended. So he fasted, he began to fast. He began to fast. He guessed and he began fasting. Then it became clear to him afterwards that he had actually fasted 15 days of Ramadan and 15 days of Shawwal. Became clear to him that he had fasted only 15 days of Ramadan and the other 15 days in which he fought was Ramadan was actually the first 15 days of Shawwal. So what is the ruling upon his fast? What is the ruling upon his fast? So he answers, Rahimahullah, لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ شَيْءٍ that there's nothing upon him. There is nothing upon him. There is no issue with this. And people may say, how? How is there no issue with this? And we say because the first 15 days that he had fasted were the last 15 days of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, there is no problem. And the last 15 days he had fasted were the first 15 days of Shawwal. So that means that he would have made qada. That those last 15 days he had fasted that were in shawal, then that would have made up, that would have been him making up for those 15 days, those first 15 days that he didn't fast from Ramadan due to him not knowing when the month had entered and exited. 
But the problem is, if it becomes clear to him that in fact, that he began fasting in Sha'ban, became clear to him that he began his fast in Sha'ban, so he fasted, for example, 15 days of Sha'ban, and then 15 days, the first 15 days of Ramadan. So what does he do in this case? So in this case upon him is to make qada, to make up for those 15 days, as of course the 15 days, the first 15 days that when Sha'ban, that uh, they are not a part of Ramadan. So insha'Allah ta'ala that they will be considered as nafilah. As voluntary fasts for him. طيب, the next benefit that he brings, Rahimahullah, Anna had the deen yusr. That this deen is ease. There is ease in it. في العمليات وفي الإحساسات وفي كل شيء. That this religion has within it ease. In its actions, its practicalities, and in every single thing, we find that this deen is a deen of ease. And how is this benefit derived? How or where is this benefit found? In the hadith. And it is found, as he said, Rahimahullah, that this sharia, that it did not leave room for hesitance and doubt. Why? Because he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَاقْدُرُوا لَهُ That if it is overcast, you are unable to sight the moon, then estimate, then estimate it. And in another narration, as we discussed, then complete uh, Sha'ban as 30 days. So there's no room for hesitance and doubt, and that a person say, Should I begin fasting? Should I not begin fasting? Should I break my fast? Should I not break my fast? طيب. Inshallah Ta'ala we conclude with that بإذن الله ونكتفي بهذا وصلي اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين